Well, hi there, Pueblo County 4-H members. Thanks for tuning in. So this is our last 4-H holiday series baking video for our challenge for the month of December. So on this video, we're gonna be making eggnog snowman. It's pretty exciting. And this recipe does involve quite a bit of ingredients and supplies. So make sure you pay attention, make sure you write everything down before you start. And because we are gonna be using the stove for part of it, make sure you have some adult supervision to ensure you're following the recipe correctly and so that you don't harm yourself. So remember, after you watch this last video, take pictures of all your creations, both snowman, gingerbread house, shortbread cookies, and garland, send them in to me at hayesb at publiccounting.us, which you'll be able to see my email listed below. Then, once you send in all four photos from our four video creations, you'll be able to get a 4-H theme prize. So, now let's walk through what you're gonna need to do for this recipe. So come on into my kitchen and let's get cooking. So here we're gonna walk through your ingredients you need and your supplies. I will also do a still photo of all of this along with the specific measurements written out so you can copy it down to make sure you have everything accurate. So, what you're gonna need is two large eggs plus one large egg yolk, so that's why I have three eggs here. You're gonna need pure vanilla extract, you're gonna need about a handful of mini chocolate chips, which you're gonna use later on. You're gonna need some ground nutmeg, heavy whipping cream, milk, sugar, and some apricots, which we are gonna be cutting into wedges of four. So that's what you're gonna need for ingredients. Then when you come over to your supplies, you're gonna need two separate mixing bowls. You're gonna need a whisk, obviously your measuring spoons, measuring cups. You're gonna need what is called a sieve, something like this. Some of these have handles, some of them kind of look like a cup. Either one is fine, you just want to make sure that it's a fine sieve so that nothing big really gets through it. You're going to need a cooking pot that's about a medium size and then at the very end you're going to need a cup. So this cup works the best size. You want something that's see-through. This is a Valentine's clean cup so I'm not going to be using that one. Instead I'm going to be using this glass here because it again has that rounded shape. You just want it to be transparent so that you can see the snowman design you're gonna make with your paintbrush here. And your paintbrush is gonna be dipped in the chocolate, so you wanna make sure that this is not one that you've used for paint because you don't wanna contaminate your paintbrush with food or vice versa. So very important that you have a nice clean paintbrush to use for your decorations. Now, let's go ahead, we're gonna do our still photo now so you can write down everything you just saw with the measurements. Then we'll start on how to actually put all of this together. So now that you have not an opportunity to write down the recipe, now we're gonna go ahead and start putting everything together. And of course, I'm gonna be following my written down recipe as well because the steps involved in this are very serious and very detailed. And if you don't do it correctly, it's not gonna turn out the way you want it to. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mix together our eggs, our one egg yolk, and our sugar. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna have the camera come in for a closer look so you can make sure you're following right along. So I have my half cup sugar here. Of course, it's measured out. I'm gonna pour that into one of my mixing bowls that I have ready to go. I'm gonna crack my two eggs into it, just like so. So I have one cracked. I have my second one. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that third yolk and just the yolk, not the white. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. So you carefully start to crack your egg, start to get it open and make sure you have two halves of your eggshell. So notice how the, this is called the whites that is streaming off and I'm going to get my yolk, tip it in and I'm going to do the seesaw motion. So see how I'm getting the whites to separate and I'm just doing a bit of that. I did lose a little bit of yolk, but that's okay. And then I'm gonna just pour that in, just like so. So then I have that, I'm gonna wash my hands off because of my eggs are raw, and I don't want that to contaminate the rest of my supplies. So they quickly rinsed off. So I have all that, now I'm gonna use my whisk, and I'm gonna whisk everything together real nice. And this is when you're gonna wanna really get, make sure your eggs are breaking apart, your yolks are mixing and doing that. Because when you separate 
the egg yolk and the whites, it actually creates a stiffer texture and creates a more foamy drink, which is what we're going for, which is why we separate it. So that's a handy thing to do. Again, if you need help, that's a great time to ask mom or dad or an older sibling to help you with that. So that's what it should look like once you mix it, kind of a grainy texture, kind of stringy because of our eggs. Then we're gonna move to our stove top. So here, you're gonna heat your milk, which of course is two and a half cups of milk and then one and then half a cup of the heavy whipping cream. You're going to put this over medium heat and just get it hot where it's steaming. Don't boil it, that's very important. If you boil it, it's gonna ruin this whole process. So it's really, really important that you only get it hot and steaming, not boiling. So you're gonna really need to watch this very carefully. Then when you have that, we're gonna have to move very quickly to make sure that we don't overcook the eggs and basically just get cooked milk. That's not what we want. So we're gonna watch this carefully. I have it on like medium heat, so you can see on my stove here, I have it about like six and a half, and I'm gonna let this kind of sit, let it start to do its thing, and then once it's going, I'm gonna take it off the heat, I'm gonna measure out one cup of it and add it to my egg milk. Egg mix, sorry, not egg milk. I'm already trying to get the egg nog in there, you guys. I'm already skipping steps. So let's go ahead, take a break, and then we'll show you what it looks like when it's starting to actually steam and not boil. So here you can see, and you might even be able to hear that it's starting to get hot. I can put my hand over it. I can see the steam. I know it's probably hard to see on the camera, but I do have a bit of steam coming off. And I want to pull it off because I am starting to get just a hair of the bubbles. And remember, you don't want to boil this. So I'm going to turn my stove off because of heat safety. I also had our camera person step back because again, you want to be safe when using a stove top. So this is hot now because again, if you boil this, if you have those bubbles on the top, your eggs have curdled and you'd have to start from the beginning with your milk and your heavy cream, okay? That's very important. You don't want to curdle these eggs. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure out one cup of this and put it into the egg mixture we made previously. So I'm going to get my one cup measurement here that I used for my milk. I'm gonna do this over my sink so that it, if it spills or makes a mess, it's okay that it's in the sink and I'm not messing up my stove top where everything is still hot. So I'm gonna do that very carefully. Again, this is where you would need some adult supervision because you are dealing with the hot liquid. So, I have my one cup all measured out. Again, I'm gonna put that on that part of the cool part of the stove and I'm gonna pour it right into my egg mixture. So I have that poured in and I'm just gonna start mixing it together. So I'm gonna do that. Make sure it's all nice and mixed together. It shouldn't be sticky like it was before. Remember how I could pull up that whisk and it would kind of stick to the whisk? It shouldn't do that anymore. Once it is all mixed together, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this back in our saucepan and turn the stove back on and heat it again over medium heat, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna take my bowl. I'm gonna add it slowly. Do it slow so that you don't cause any spills. Again, this might be where you might need some help. And we're gonna pour that back in there. So I have that done. I'm gonna move it back over to where it was cooking before. And I'm gonna turn my stove back on, onto that medium heat. I'm gonna do it a little lower at this point to where it's about five and a half on my stove. You'll need to play with your stove to know where your medium heat is, but it should be around between five and a half or six. Or your stove might just say medium heat, which is fine. Any of those will work, okay? Then, what you didn't see earlier is you might wanna use a wooden spoon if you have one, because that's gonna tell you when your consistency is right with your eggnog. You can use a whisk, but you really won't be able to see if it's getting thick enough like you would on a spoon. So a wooden spoon works the best, but if you only have a plastic one or a metal one, that's fine too. You just need something with that flat back edge so that you can be checking your consistency. And what we're gonna be looking for, and I'm gonna verify with my recipe here, is we are going to be looking for that the mix is thick enough to coat the back of the spoon. So we're just gonna start mixing this. Notice, and we're gonna have our cameraman get in a little close so you can see what's happening in the pot. See how it's starting to get kind of thick? And it's starting to almost look like, well, like we're cooking eggs. 
which in some ways we are. So I'm gonna just start stirring it. And you want to have, you are gonna have to stand here and stir it for quite a while. So we're gonna just start stirring it here. And I can actually start to feel some resistance. So let's try, let's see how it's looking. So see how it's starting to stick to the back, but it's not quite there, it's still pretty liquidy which means it's not the consistency we're looking for. So we're gonna keep letting it heat up and we're just gonna keep stirring. This is when your arm is gonna get quite the workout here because sometimes cooking does require a little bit of strength on your part. So this should only take a couple minutes. It shouldn't really even take more than um, five minutes if you have it on that medium heat. So I can again feel that my mixture is getting a little thick I'm gonna check it again. It's still not quite there. It's starting to thicken up, but it's still not to that right consistency. So we're just gonna keep doing this until it is thick enough. And then we're gonna use that fine sieve and we're gonna pour it through the sieve into our empty bowl that we haven't been using. Then we will add our vanilla extract and our cinnamon. So make sure if you get to this step that you're ready to do that or this is the time when you might want to ask mom or dad for help just because you might need an extra pair of hands or two while you're sitting here stirring your eggnog. So let's take a break and then we'll get back to you once the consistency is exactly what we're looking for. Now about five to six minutes have passed with my stirring and now it's about the consistency we need it from. So now our cameraman is going to come back in so you can see what's happening in my pot. Again, I've been stirring this consistently since we took our little break. So notice here, the back of my spoon when I dip it, it stays consistently covered. It doesn't just drip off right away like it would earlier that you saw on the video. It's ready to be put through the sieve. So. I'm just gonna do that. I can see that it's ready to go. I'm gonna take my spoon out. I'm gonna set it here with my whisk. I'm gonna turn my heat off, because again, we want to be safe. Safety, safety, especially when we're working with our stove. So, you're gonna put your sieve, if it fits on top of the bowl you're using, just like so, where it's a perfect match, okay? You're gonna pour your liquid through the sieve. And if there was anything big in there, it's gonna kinda help catch that. So again, this is where you might need some adult supervision or help because it is heavy, it is hot, and we're just gonna slowly pour it through. And our cameraman can come in closer to make sure that you all can see. And notice how I'm just taking my time and I'm getting it all through the sieve here. And you can actually see that there is a couple things that did get caught in the sieve. So I'm gonna put my pot down where it'll be safe and out of my way. And that's what I caught at with my seed. And that just catches the little bit of eggs that were starting to cook that didn't really get mixed in, even with my stirring. So that's why you wanna use that seed. So that's all good to go. That's gonna go in my sink because we're done with that. Now I'm gonna add my 1 4th teaspoon of cinnamon, which, no, nutmeg, sorry, but you can use cinnamon if you'd like to. So I have nutmeg in this, you can use cinnamon. If you do do cinnamon, it is just one fourth teaspoon like it is with my nutmeg. So I'm gonna put that in there, and then it's one half teaspoon of our vanilla extract. So I'm gonna do that. And this is a brand new bottle, so I have to, of course, open it up and get it poured in here. So I'm gonna just get it open a little bit so I can measure it out. It doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to be usable. So again, I'm gonna very carefully make sure I measure it out just right. It's even, we're pouring it in. And then I am going to, this is when you can get your whisk back or your spoon. Either one is fine, I have my whisk handy, so that's what I'm gonna use. And you're gonna just whisk it all together or stir it all together. So notice how I'm making sure everything is getting mixed in. You wanna be careful because you should be able to see the steam coming off this. This is still very warm, okay? You wanna make sure you're being careful when handling this. Once this is all mixed together, then comes the part that takes a little bit of time. So you're gonna wanna just let this sit out, get used to it at room temperature for one hour. Once that one hour has passed, you're gonna put it in your fridge and let it sit in your fridge 
for two hours, okay? Then you'll be able to put it in the glasses. We can finish the rest of our decorations, the rest of our steps where we use the remaining of our heavy whipping cream, our chocolate chips, and our apricot wedges, and we'll put everything together. So let's go ahead, let this sit for an hour, put it in our fridge for two hours, and see what happens when we finish out this product. So sit tight, grab some hot chocolate, and let's wait for this to cool down, shall we? So while our eggnog is cooling, we're going to want to go ahead and get our chocolate settled as our decorations. So in my micro microwave safe bowl here, I've poured some of the mini chocolate chips. I've also left some aside that aren't melted, so I have them for decorations later on as well. So I have those, and what I did is I just put this in the microwave safe bowl, and I started at 20 seconds, opened the microwave, stirred them, put it in for another 20 seconds. And by that time, they had melted enough to where I could get a spoon, mix it together, and it was pretty soft and liquidy. So, this is where you can either use a paintbrush or your finger, but a paintbrush has a little bit more control. So, I'm going to get my paintbrush, get some chocolate on here, and we're going to paint buttons, and we're going to paint arms. So, I have my chocolate here. I'm going to start with my arms. I'm going to tilt the glass, and of course, like snowmen have sticks for arms which kind of look like wise, so that's what I'm going to go for. And I will tell you now, I am not always the most artistically inclined person, but that's okay because it just gives my snowman eggnog a little bit of special character. So there's one arm, okay, I'm going to do the exact same thing and I'm going to space them apart so that I make sure I have enough room for my buttons that are going to go right in the middle. So I'm going to do that a little bit farther apart and this is on the inside of the glass very important so do this on the inside of your glass because it will mix into your eggnog after it's been chilled so that it will be a nice chocolatey addition to your eggnog which is pretty nice so I'm gonna work on my other Y here again like I said I'm not the best and certainly doing Y's that are a bit backwards for me is a bit difficult but that's okay so there is my other arm, okay, so there's my snowman arms, and now I'm going to add his buttons, which is about three buttons normally. So I'm going to do one, two, and three. So there we have it, his arms and his three snowmen. So if you please make about four snowman eggnogs all together with this one recipe, so you'll need four glasses that are see-through that you can paint on with your chocolate, okay? So that's why you need about the handful of the mini chocolate chips. They melt easier than the regular size chocolate chips, but if that's all you have, go ahead and use those. Just realize you're gonna need more time than those 20 seconds that I mentioned before. So once you have this, just set your glass down and let it dry so that when you pour your eggnog in, it won't completely smear it. It will let the chocolate kind of set on the glass so that you can still have that cute, fun decoration, which will make our snowman. So let's go ahead, we're still waiting for our eggnog to chill. Once it's chilled, we'll hop back in, finish this out, and I can't wait to see how you all did it as well. See you in just a little bit. Once your hour of room temperature and two hours of fridge setting are up, this is what your finished eggnog should look like when you pull it out of your fridge. The bowl should no longer be warm to the touch and the top might look a bit solid, but that will disappear once you stir the eggnog with a whisk or a spoon. So now our three hours have passed, our one hour that was out at room temperature and then our two hours in the fridge. So now it's time to get that eggnog out swirl it around one last time. And remember, you need to do your chocolate steps a little bit beforehand so that the chocolate has time to sit on the glass. So let's get my eggnog out now. I'll show you all what it looks like. So, this is what it looks like when it comes straight out of the fridge. It's kind of got a film to it on the top. We're gonna go ahead and get my whisk. I'm just gonna whisk that together and just get that through, and that's kind of what it looks like. So that's done now, and it's ready to go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just pour it in a little measuring cup, just cause it's easier for me to pour it in my cup that way. I have my chocolate already setting here on my glass. So I'm gonna go ahead 
and get that in there. And of course, if you do four snowmen, you're gonna need to divide this equally into the glasses. So that's something to keep in mind. And every glass will hold a different amount depending on how big your glass is. So that's just about right so that I can get my peaks in there, which is what we're gonna do now. So that's what it starts to look like. I stopped my eggnog just at the top of my little first bead there of chocolate and it sits very nice because I've allowed my chocolate to sit. I'm gonna move this over. And then remember that remaining amount of heavy whipping cream we have? Well, now it's time to use it. So that's one, one half cup remaining of heavy cream. So you're gonna put that into a bowl by itself, just like so. You're gonna use the whisk, and you can use the same whisk you just used for your eggnog if you want. It's totally fine, because it's gonna go in the same place anyway. And you're just gonna start whipping it. And you wanna whip it pretty fast, because you wanna start whipping it enough to where it's gonna start making really stiff peaks. That only happens if you get kind of aggressive with it. So you really gotta get your arms in there. are just going to beat that and get it in there. And it does take a little bit, so you just really got to get in there and swirl it around good. Because what this does is it turns our heavy whipping cream into just regular old whipped cream that comes out of a can. So I'm going to keep doing it until it's nice and stiff. And if it's not getting to that consistency you would like with your whisk, you can do one other trick that I'm gonna show you. You can do one of these mixing spatulas. And this works really well too, and you just wanna get it in there. And start whisking it around, same thing. This will get it more up on the sides, but that's okay. And you're just gonna to wanna to be fast and heavy with it. And often, it's also easier to do this with a machine, too. Especially if you're like me, and your arms get really tired. Because sometimes, my arms do that, too. So, apparently, my arms are not wanting to get to the peaks that I need it to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my mixer, and then we're gonna show you what it looks like. So hang on tight while we get that set up. So keep your mixer on a lower speed if you do end up using this. So have it on two. Oh, so unfortunately, our peaks did not end up getting stiff with our heavy whipping cream. So it started to get pretty close, but it stopped just shy of it, and it's not getting quite that stiff consistency we want. Because you want it to basically be able to sit up like regular whipping cream so that you can get some structure to it because that's kind of the whole point. So if all else fails, you can always just use regular whipping cream that comes out of a can, okay? So that's always your backup plan if everything else just doesn't work because sometimes that's what happens when you cook. It doesn't always go the way it should. But that's why you should be prepared no matter what. And this is our learn by doing, so of course we're just gonna resolve our issues and keep on going. So with regular whipped cream and with, if you're able to do it by hand, you just wanna get it in there and you wanna make a circular kind of moundish shape on top to give that appearance of a snowman. So once you have that, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna get those apricot wedges we talked about earlier, the preserved ones, and you're just gonna cut it into a wedge which basically just means you're gonna cut it into fours, try and make it like a triangle shape, which is basically what I have here. So that's my apricot. This is gonna make our snowman's nose. So we're going to place his lovely nose just above his last button. And then remember those extra chocolate chips that you didn't melt? Guess what? Those are gonna be his eyes. So I have some of those here. And I'm gonna get two of them. Place them just above his beautiful little nose here. And voila, here is our wonderful snowman eggnog and I will turn him around a couple times for you all. So 
make sure you try this out. Try it a couple different ways. Show me what you make because trust me, this recipe takes you on a wild ride. Thanks for watching. I can't wait to see all of your lovely photo creations. Make sure you send them in and look forward to getting your prize. See you in 2021. Thanks for watching this last video in the Pueblo County 4-H Holiday Foods Baking Challenge. Be sure to email in photos of your completed creations to the email listed below on this screen to be able to claim your 4-H prize. Happy baking, and we can't wait to see you in 2021.